Okay, I'm live, everybody. Um, we are having some technical problems right now. You may or may not be able to hear me. If you can hear me, we need you to let us know because Chris can't hear me. I'm on my phone with Chris. Is there anybody there? Can you hear me? If you can't hear me, we're going to have to... Well, if you can't hear me, there's no point in me talking to you, is there? Can you hear me? Is anybody having issues? Okay, that's as much as I can do, Chris. All right, Gary's saying he can hear you. Oh, good. yoo -hoo. It's just you, Chris. It's your end. I have a, I have a feeling it might have something to do with the headphones. Um, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> All right. Um, so, okay. Well, good. If, if everyone can hear me, so I'm going to stay on the phone with Chris because she can't hear me. And the first thing we're going to do, is, of course, is I'm going to say good morning, everybody. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to say good morning to my spirit guide, Grey Eagle, who, as always, is standing to my right side. I'm going to say good morning to Chris. She can hear me on her phone. And I'm also going to uh, say good morning to all of you if I didn't do it already. Uh, and uh, so, uh, how are how are you all? How is everybody? I want you to be responding to me. I want you to be talking to me. I want you to tell me how you are. If I cough and splutter a little bit, it's because I still have this chesty cough thing going on. But we're working on it. My lovely doctor and I. So we're trying to get all of that sorted out. Anyway. Um, I think that Chris will be able to get you in the chat room, right, Chris? You'll see people put, go, going into the chat room. So I will be able to respond to you, Rosemary, and I will be able to respond to people in the chat room. I just will only hear you via the phone. Oh, uh, all right. So um, is there anybody there? We have a number of people that have logged on. Great. Um, Judith actually said she's here early for a change. She was on before we went live. So thank goodness everybody for waiting for us. She you says she what? certainly missed you and yeah. Grey Eagle. Hold, hold on, Chris, a minute, because we, we've got two of you. I'm going to put my phone on mute. Can you still hear me, Chris? I can I still hear you. Oh, and I can hear you on the silly phone. All right. I don't know what to do then. Um, oh, I know. Turn the sound down. Why don't I turn the sound down? Let's see. Now say something to me, Chris. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. T, good. I've got, I've, I've got the sound out. But you can hear me though, right? I can hear you. Okay, that's good then. All right. Because we got two of Chris going on and it was very, very disconcerting. Now... You were telling me that um, who came in on early? Somebody came in early, which we like. Yes, that would be Judith. And she says she certainly missed you, Rosemary and Grey Eagle. Good morning, Judith. Well, I missed all of you too, but here we are. Of course, I think it's Chris's fault that we're having these problems. It's nothing to do with me. It's never my fault. You know, you know those people who say it wasn't me, it wasn't me. All right, <laughs> Chris, keep going. All right, then we have Gary saying, Howdy, Rosemary. Happy belated Valentine's Day. Red, red for love, red for Valentine's Day. Uh, yes, thank you. It's very exciting. Um, yesterday, my darling boy, my grandson, uh, Valentine's Day of all days to do this went for a, for an extremely important audition, uh, and um, we think he did okay. But who knows? We're trying to get him accepted into a very special music school, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. But he did his audition. Uh, he, he was nervous but we think he did okay. Uh, so we're waiting to hear that. But what a Valentine's Day. It'll be a Valentine's Day he'll remember, right? Um, so, yeah, so I I didn't get a Valentine card. 
my grandson tells me, he assures me he's in the middle of making it. I don't really believe him. It doesn't matter anyway. My daughter didn't send me a Valentine card. Nobody, Gary, you didn't send me a Valentine nobody loves me <laughs> just kidding yes I know lots of people love me I'm fine I'm fine but um, oh, do you remember um, I'm sure a lot of you will remember this you know when you're young and every, it seems like everybody else is getting a valentine card but you and then you get a boyfriend and then you get a valentine card it's a very exciting and odd day don't you think but I did send my grandson, my daughter, and Apache, the little puppy, I did send them all, not only Valentine cards, but I send them Valentine kids as, uh, gifts as well. But that's because I'm nice. <laughs> Keep going. I want to hear how everybody's Valentine Day went. Okay, Chris. All right, Dean is on. He says he's been quite ill the last few days and could use some healing. Dean, definitely, we'll definitely be sending you healing. What's going on? We want to know what's going on and how you're doing. And uh, definitely, definitely we'll be sending healing. Excuse me. <coughs> Keep going, Chris. All right. Flory's on saying good morning and happy Valentine's. Hi, Flory. And then I Mary. All I, my, my attempt at the red Valentine. This is red for Valentine's Day, red for love, red for sending love. So this is why I put on this sweater, even though I'm boiling in it, actually. It's a, like a it's a very fine sweater, but it's a knitted sweater. Okay, go on. Keep going. All right. And then Mary's on saying, good morning. Rosemary, you look beautiful in red. Is there any uh, message from Grey Eagle today? Um, oh, gosh. Actually, I was going to listen and ask, and but love, love, love. So love is the theme, theme of today. It's a very exciting day. So love is the theme of today and love is the theme for this week. Let's make it a theme. Why don't we make love a theme for the month? We should make, or even forever, but let's make it at least the theme of the month. We'll have to see what we can do next week's show, Chris. We'll have to do a, a lovey show. I might have a nice idea. Anyway, that's for next week. Keep going. All right. Angie's on saying good morning. Morning, Angie. My mother-in-law recently passed and her oldest son in power of attorney has gone against her wishes to be cremated. Is she angry with him? Oh dear. Um, why do people do that? I wonder why people do that. You know, it's, um, it's don't, don't think I'm not listening. I'm waiting for something. But in the meantime, you know, it's like... Um, you know, I always get nervous. Uh, as we get older, we have to re rely on our children for so many things. And there are children who think that they know better than we do, even though our minds are sharp and our wits are sharp. Our bodies might be failing a bit, but our bodies, our minds and our whatever that is that's going on is as sharp as tack. We know what we want just because we're old. I've had so many people just this last week, in the last week, talk about, well, you're getting old. Yeah, well, I, it's so true. Uh, it's what we do. We're human. This is if we're lucky, we get to grow old. Um, and uh, I know some of you will understand when I say that. But just because we're old and, and, and maybe it hurts when... <laughs> <laughs> when I get out of bed in the morning and I can't straighten my back and uh, maybe my maybe it takes me longer to to deal with things uh, but, you know physically uh, it's challenging getting old is challenging but if you have a sharp mind and a sharp wit and you ask your kids to do things for you Listen, kids out there with your parents, don't think you know better than they do. Pay attention to them. And it makes me nervous because, you know, the, there'll come a time when my daughter will have the responsibility of me, not necessarily in a physical sense, but she'll have to make decisions for me. And the one thing I hope is that uh, those decisions are honoured because I'll make those decisions being of sound mind. And 
there should be some sort of rule or law or something that if you're left, you know, if if uh, somebody states in their will or even if it's not in the will, but everybody knows it's it's your wish, let's say, to be cremated or let's say to leave a portion of your money to this person, um, whatever, that's your decision and your family should honour it. And I feel very sad I feel very sad for you and I feel very sad for your family that your mother's wishes were not honoured, um, whatever reason he might have had or might have thought he had for going against her wishes that, you know, that there is not one good reason. Um, uh, and no, I'm told by Grey Eagle, I don't think your mom's mad I think it's immaterial to her at this point it doesn't matter um listen to what he says to me um when we pass into the spirit world what is in what is important to us or what we think is important to us here on this earth is not necessarily so um it's not worth fighting about this is uh, yeah okay i do i do have a a very clear message coming through here you probably want to pummel your brother you probably want to cause a ruckus but uh don't create a rift in the family for this one small thing because at the end of the day whether you're cremated and your ashes get scattered or whether you sitting rotting in the ground or not quite sure whatever other ways we uh, we can be you know we we disappear our human body it's only a body it's only a physical thing and it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what matters is the spirit survives so please my darling as much as you might be upset i don't think your mom is upset i don't think she thinks it's worth creating a family rift and um your your brother he's going to have to come to terms with going against the wishes at some point it's going to be his turn to uh, to tell somebody what his wishes are um i wouldn't want to be in his shoes because he's going to be thinking what if somebody does to me that what i did to my mother but that's his cross to bear not yours okay chris all right judith says <laughs> rosemary for the past few days and nights as i'm waking or going to sleep I feel like I need to check on my pet in the living room. That is where Boo, my dog who passed, had his perch and window. It's interesting. Um, it might well be that uh, he's trying to get in touch with you. Um, I don't think you have to go into the living room to get in touch with him. I think, you know, just pay attention. Uh, but it, it might just be a way of him reminding you, hey, I'm here. Uh, which which is really lovely and that's what our pets do i've seen kachoro over the last few days i've seen nino over the last few days uh here and there unexpectedly i might be um uh knitting now i've got an exciting thing to tell you all see this poor little hand i've actually managed to start knitting now i have to tell you that <laughs> it's slow going it's hard it's slow going but i did manage to finish a sweater that i had started for reese a year ago and um oh boy oh boy it's a painstaking and slow process but isn't that exciting uh i'm determined and uh and i've been playing the piano and it hurts but and i can't play as i used to play because my thumb doesn't work properly, but at least I'm, you know, sort of attempting these things. So, you know, we. This is what I'm. I'm saying, you know, the body might be, might not be willing. What is it? The body's willing, but something's weak. No, the mind is willing, but the body is weak. But we have to keep going, and we have to keep going on, and being the best that we can be, bearing in mind that our loved ones not only our friends and our family in the spirit world well our animals for those of us who consider our animals to be family our animals are there with us as well and will make their presence known or they'll make their presence felt in one way or another and i think this is what's happening chris 
All right, Maggie says, I also love the red on you. And good morning. <laughs> good and morning, here's the buddy. question. Yes, buddy. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Do we have another question from Maggie? She'll, uh, she'll know what I'm talking about. Yes, Maggie, what's the question? <laughs> I'm being scheduled for radiation treatment for the C word they found during surgery. Yeah. Will it go well? And can I be securely secluded in the house with no danger to family? Yes. Now, well, yes. It'll, yes, it, you'll be fine. The secluded and all that stuff. Um, you might remember a conversation we had where you have to be very selfish with yourself. And now you understand why I was so adamant about saying to you, you've got to be selfish with yourself. And that means sometimes telling your family back off. It means telling your family go away. It means... Um, wrapping yourself in a blue blanket and putting yourself in a space where you are comfortable and where you are peaceful. You know, uh, families can be difficult, can't they, at times, but you cannot take on others' burdens, especially when you are sick yourself. You cannot afford to expend your energy on other people. Sometimes there are times in our lives when we have to be purely and absolutely and simply selfish and just take care of ourselves for everybody's benefit. Chris. Dean's asking, does Gray Eagle ever sit around a fire with people from his tribe? Oh, yes. <laughs> we often sit by the fire. Um, you know, if you've ever heard Gray Eagle speak, and I know some of you have, uh, and hopefully we'll do again, um, maybe we'll plan s something for that sort of later in the year, but um yes he will he will say come sit by my fire now a lot of people uh dean we've had this conversation i think before but a lot of people will come and sit by the fire now i'm talking in the spiritual sense here they'll come and sit they'll warm themselves by the fire they'll take what they want from the fire which is what we should do no, there's you know no criticism about that at all and and then they will get what they need get what they want and and they walk away and then there are others who come in and sit by the fire and um they uh they they will feed the fire in other words they will give they will give of themselves and feeding the fire means uh, doing things for others means enhancing your own spirituality and enhancing your own gifts, um, giving not just to others, but giving to yourself as well. Um, when you feed the fire, you're feeding Grey Eagle's fire, you're feeding my fire, you're feeding your own fire. Um, it's about giving. It's about not just taking, it's about giving as well and giving to others in the best way that you can, but giving to yourself. You heard me say uh, a few minutes ago to Maggie, you've got to be selfish with yourself, which is when you're in need, and, and Dean, you're in need right now, you've got to give to yourself. I hope you took the message I gave to Maggie to heart because sometimes you just have to say no to the takers and, and a lot of people don't mean to be takers, but they take anyway. And, and boy, do they expend our energy and it drives us crazy because we're trying to help others and we're trying to fix things for other people and we're trying to do our best for other people. But sometimes we just have to say no, right? This minute, no. And, um, and it's hard to say no sometimes. And it's hard to get through to your family, especially if you're feeling ill, because your family is so used to you always being there. I know my daughter's so used to me always being there. And in the last few months, I have not been there in, in the same way that I would normally be there. And it's been tough. Um, it's, you know, it's been tough for her, but it's been tough for me not being able to, to, to be that person that she can come to always. I mean, that she's still, I'm still that person, but you, I hope you all understand what I'm saying. Sometimes, the energy that you have to expend on others, and particularly your family, 
if you if you're sick it's just becomes sometimes just too hard and it's okay to say okay not now you know get, you need to give me a break you need to you know you need to to help help me to find some peace here you need to you know you need to back off a bit or whatever it is you have to say to your family as much as you love them um sometimes you just have to deal with yourself and in dealing with yourself it means that you're giving to yourself you're being selfish with yourself in order that you can come back to being the person that you've always been and being able to give again it's like healers i always say to my healers you cannot expend your energy to the point of you being exhausted because then you'll be no good for your patients so um, what i'm saying here is to everybody who's have, having issues. And we love our families to death, but sometimes they can be a little bit of a drain on us and they don't mean to be, but sometimes we just have to say, okay, enough. Right now it's enough. I need to deal with me so that I can get myself better in order that I can deal with you again. Ah, I'd love to hear people's comments on that. <laughs> Okay, Chris. <coughs> All right. This one's from Susan. She's saying she loved the idea of love forever as opposed to just the month. And then she has a question. Okay. Any messages I from Gray Eagle today from my beloved family? Much love and thanks always. Um, right now, right now, no. Oh, there we go. Um, I was going to say no. And it's love, love, love. So they are the messages from your family. See, this is, it's the, it's the love day. It's the love month. So, so lots of love, love, love. And I'm also actually told to tell you, Susan, they can see you. So they're watching you. They're watching over you. They can see you. You better be being good. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Chris. All right. Gary says his Valentine's Day was magic. He split a half a cord of wood. <laughs> yeah, well, you forgot to send me a card. Just saying. My neighbors actually, uh, they invited me for dinner. Uh, not yet, uh, not yesterday, the day, when it was the day before. Was it yesterday? Yes, it was yesterday. They invited me for some, it wasn't dinner and it wasn't lunch. It was somewhere in between. And then gave me a box of chocolates in the shape of a heart. They are the best neighbors I've ever had. I can tell you, they're brilliant. Uh, see, somebody loves me. Anyway, keep going, Chris. <laughs> All right, Wayne's saying it's nice to see you. I hope we can get our appointment in soon. Oh, I got the Wayne. system all set up this time. I'm pro I promise, I promise, I promise. Uh, you know, mind you, it wasn't my fault, I don't think, actually, because maybe it was just nobody's fault. Uh, you know, what we have to understand is when people have a consultation, it happens in the right time. So if a consultation is cancelled or if it's put on hold or if you can't get the date you want or something like that, please don't worry about it because the spirit world knows exactly when we need it. So they will organize it for us. So for those of you who have been disappointed and we've had to cancel a couple of times, you, you wouldn't want me to look at I'm talking a lot, but I'm also my, I'm going to start coughing in a bit. Um, um, but you want me well and healthy when I'm doing your consultation because otherwise what's the point? Because, you know, what is the point? I can't drain myself. I've just told everybody else to be selfish, so I have to be selfish with me too. But please don't worry, you know, when things don't happen, not just a consultation with me, but when things don't happen uh, with your family, with your friends, with your work, when things don't happen that you really, you know, you really want them to happen, but they don't happen, somewhere, somewhere in the universe, there is a reason and a good reason why things don't happen. I, I remember years and years ago, a a very, very good client of mine he would come to see me on a regular basis. His wife had been uh, killed in a very tragic um, car accident. And he would come to me for lots of reasons, but one of those reasons, he had a business and he would often ask me financial advice. And he came to me this one day and he told me that 
he'd been offered this amazing, amazing uh, chance for investment. And um, it meant him putting, you know, a lot of money in and so on and so forth. But he was very excited about it. And he wanted my opinion. He wanted Gregor's opinion. And so to cut a very long story very short, we said, do as you please. If it's good for you, if you feel it's good for you, it's not for us to make decisions. It's for you to make decisions. However, if you invest now, you will regret it later. And he was very confused, but he listened. He did not take up the investment opportunity. And months went by, and every time he'd come and see me, he'd remind me, I could have made a lot of money on that investment. And I, and I kept saying to him, it was your choice to do this. And then one day he came to me and he said, well, you were right. Another opportunity to come, far greater, far better for him, et cetera, and et cetera. And he said, if I had made that investment that I was going to make, I would not have had the money to invest in this new thing. My wife was right. Grey Eagle was right. Rosemary, you were right. There's always a reason why things seem to get stuck. Um, we have to have, they're, they're the hard times when we have to have faith and we have to believe because there are always those opportunities that come to us that will work out and do work out. So, Chris, keep going. All right, Francesca says, hello, can you have a message for me? Uh, um, okay, for anyone else out there, the message of the day is love, 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 that's it. For, for today because um, again I'm being a little bit selfish I'm trying not to expend too much energy Grail has his hand on my shoulder it's okay for me to be selfish apparently right now so the message from all of those of your loved ones in the spirit world today this is the reason I'm wearing this red sweater obviously is love 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 okay Chris this is from Randy, who says, it's my Hi. birthday, and I'm 53 oh. years young. Happy birthday to you. I'm not sure I'm going to do well here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Randy. From Rosemary, and from everybody who's listening, and from all of your loved ones in the spirit world, and everybody you can think of. Happy birthday to you. Uh, it was my grandson's birthday on Monday uh, he had the most amazing birthday weekend birthday day I told you what happened with him yesterday he was 11 years old oh, do you remember Randy you're 53 right today do you remember Randy when you were 11 years old <laughs> oh boy okay Chris this next one is from Lorraine my puppy dog is 14 oh. and have had some health issues, but okay. she's a trooper and bounces back. Recently, we both had eye issues at the same time. Oh, Are our pets so in tune that these things can happen? She also Ooh. appears in my dreams, and she was born on my daughter's birthday. Oh, gosh. So many, so many connections there, right? Uh, yes. Uh, it is often the case that our our pets, uh, if especially if we have strong connection with them, that they will often, um, very often, mimic what is going on with us uh, because they're so sensitive, they're so in tune, and they're so connected and so close to us. So probably this is what's going on. I hope you get your eye issues uh, sorted uh, soon. Um, if you'd like us to send you healing, please let us know. Chris. Danielle says, hello, beautiful Rosemary. My body feels so incredibly tired lately. Any thoughts on this from Grey Eagle? My The first thing that comes to mind is ginseng and royal jelly. Um, I, when I'm sick or if I'm traveling, um, or if I need a boost, um, I take it every day. You can buy it, it comes in little bottles. You can get it actually Amazon, sell it. Um, I'll say it again. It's ginseng 
tender oil jelly comes in a little bottle usually they're either 12 or 24 in a pack um, it's not expensive um, each little bottle has comes with its own little straw you stick the straw in the top of the bottle and you suck it up and I would suggest that a month's course of that which is one box of if you buy the bigger box <coughs> a month's course of that well, can really help to boost your immune system. I find it really, really uh, great. Um, of course, honey is something also that we try to take on a daily basis, but to, you might want to try the ginseng. And of course, we would send you healing also. Is there any, take a look at your life. Is there any particular reason why you're exhausted? Could it be that you have someone in your life who is taking, 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 taking your energy? Could that be it? Because it is, if it is, or if you're allowing people to take from you and you're depleting your energy and you're not putting that energy back in, here we go again. I think the message of the day is love and selfishness. How about that? You know, I'm a great advocate of selfishness. I encourage my students to be selfish. I encourage my healers to be selfish. Because it is a, uh, it's a way of keeping us strong. Um, I'm not talking about being selfish to the point where we walk all over everybody else to have our own way. I'm talking selfish in the way of treating ourselves a little bit uh, once a week, maybe once a week or once every 10 days or so. Buy yourself a box of chocolates or a little bottle of perfume, a nice scarf or something. Give something to yourself that makes you feel good. Um, you know, uh, having a having a a, a, a a movie marathon, or um, I'm trying to think, just sitting and just reading all day all all day long. That's a real treat that I enjoy uh, because I am a very I'm a big reader. I read. I don't think there's a day goes by when I don't read. When I'm not reading. Um, think of the things that you can do for yourself. Don't cost any money go for a walk in the park the weather is will soon begin to get better here it's great weather of course in florida it's great weather but you know think of the things that you can do make yourself a cake for you just for you make yourself something nice i'm going to make myself some cheese biscuits this weekend i've got a great recipe for cheese biscuits and they are fabulous and delicious and i think i might just make those for myself although i'm going to have company this week so i'll have to share them mm, they'll be gone in a heartbeat all right chris this is from francesca saying my life is very difficult can you help me please uh well, I think it's going to take more than the two minutes that we've got for you on this show. So um, what I'm going to suggest is, do you have a confidant? Do you have somebody who can help you, who, who could just sit and hold your hand? Um, you could um, book an appointment for a consultation. Um, or, these are the questions that I would ask before you do any of those things. Is it me? Whenever we're having problems, whenever we have uh, involved in a situation, it could be problems with the neighbor, it could be problems with your family, it could be problems with, you know, health issues or whatever it is. And you, the first thing we need to ask ourselves with it, when our problems, when problems occur, is it me? Okay, is there something that I could do differently to make my life better? And you know, 99.999% of the time, the answer is yes, there is something I could do to make my life better. And we've been talking about this this morning, most of the morning, being selfish with yourself, finding, finding something that you can do that pleases you once every week to 10 days. Um, saying no, oh boy. No is a hard word, and I had to learn that word very, very fast when I first began uh, my work as a, a spiritual medium. But uh, it's a hard word, and it, it's you can say it, but can you mean it? Can you follow through with it? And you know, it might may well be, Francesca, that you you've got to. We've all of us got to ask that question: Is it me? I mean. I'm having all this issue with the with stuff at the moment. Is it me? Of course, it's me. 
<laughs> yes, it is, of course it's me. So frustrating. Uh, my daughter said to me the other day, that's it, no more butter. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> But there is always something that we can do, no matter what our situation is, there's always something we can do to make it better. I've started knitting. It is painful, let me tell you, but I'm working at it. Um, we have to determine what can we do to make our lives better. Uh, if we've got someone in our lives who's causing problems, um, is it because we are encouraging them? We're egging them on. Are we responsible? Uh, do we easily get roped into an argument? Sometimes it's better to turn your back on an argument and walk away. Is it me? Always you need to ask that question. <coughs> Excuse me. Is it me? Okay, Chris. Eric, your gardener extraordinaire, wants My to know, do you want a fig tree? I Bye, Daffodil Man. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Wants to know, do you want a fig tree? Oh, I've always wanted a fig tree. I love figs. Uh, you know that figs contain serotonin. I don't know if you know that. And serotonin is uh, what, uh, let's say, oils the wheels, if you like, of the pineal gland which seats itself right behind where you would think the third eye would be. Oh, oh are you following me here? Um, now, the, the Buddha used to sit under the what they called the Buddha tree, which is the fig tree. And all day long, every day, he would eat the fruit from the figs. Well, all day, every day, eating figs. It's not going to work for you if you get a pound of figs or two pounds of figs and you eat them. So it's not going to work that way. But serotonin actually uh, enhances the chakra point, that the third, I call it the third eye or whatever it is, it enhances and helps to oil the wheels. Behind where, where the uh, chakra point is, is the pineal gland, which thrives on serotonin. See, I'm telling you, you had no idea, did you? You're all listening to me. You had no idea how wise I could be and the knowledge that I have. <laughs> anyway, um, serotonin encourages the pineal gland to secrete. And in turn, that encourages the chakra placed right here. It encourages it to, I think it's open. I've got someone sneaking through the door. It encourages the uh, the um, the chakra right that chakra point right there. It encourages it to to move, to turn, to spin, which in turn means that we're able to see more, to sense more, to be aware of what is going on. Now, I don't want you all to think that you can you can become psychic by eating figs. That's not what I'm saying, but. The pineal gland, serotonin helps the pineal gland to secrete, to respond. Do I want a fig tree? I love figs anyway, and I would love a fig tree. And while we're on the subject of plants, um, I have to take a picture of these things. The bulbs that you sent me, Mr. Daffodil Man, are actually... I actually couldn't do anything with them before Christmas, but guess what? Uh, they're all in a dish. They're, they put them in water, and I've got five of them now with green shoots, and I'm hoping the rest are going to come green. They've all got roots now, big, long roots, so I'm excited about that. So I may just, I know it's not the time of year, it's not the weather and all the rest of it, I don't know, but they're working for me. I'm going to have some hyacinths. I'm pretty certain that my hyacinth, hyacinth bulbs are responding, reacting. Maybe you could give me some advice how I can give them a little boost. Can I put some some something in them, some fertilizer or whatever in them? Anyway, all right. Yes, I'd love a fig tree, my darling. Thank you. Chris, keep going. This is from Susan. I have a daughter struggling with an infant and being a single mom. Any messages for her for getting out of depression would be greatly helped. 
have you been listening this morning? Um, it's so hard for single mothers. My daughter is a single mother. The, my grandson's father is around, but um, that doesn't mean as much help. My daughter bears the brunt of it all, and she does an amazing job but it's very very tiring i was a single mother with no no father anywhere he disappeared and uh, furthermore stole money and did all of that stuff um i think it's a natural thing for young mothers uh to sort of become depressed and tired and so on i think what we have to as you as your mum, i know you can do this and maybe you let her listen to this selfishness buying us treating yourself once a week or once every 10 days or something treating yourself doing something nice for her uh, just for her um, handing the baby off sometimes you know to to people who are willing to help um, i think that in some ways your daughter is very independent and she likes to feel that she can do it all herself well guess what you can't so she needs to you know she needs to uh, understand that uh, um, asking for help or, or saying yes when help is offered is a good thing but doing things for herself thinking about you know what she can do for her and as I just said a minute ago is it me and in her case I think yes it is her she's trying to do too much she's ex she, her expectations of her own achievements as a mother and, and doing what she does are so high she so wants to succeed that she's pushing herself and she's not, you know, as, as many young mothers do, she's pushing herself and demanding too much of herself. And sometimes you just need to take a break. So, you know, so um, you might want to let her watch this show. Selfishness and love are the theme of today. Chris. Okay, this one's from Anne Marie. It's a two-parter. I took your suggestions and contacted a family member who we have always had a bumpy relationship with. Okay. And I also sent the family members a Valentine. So thank oh. you and blessings for that. And I then the question. <laughs> yes. Is, I, want, I want to know how it worked out. Never mind the question. I want to know how it worked out when she contacted uh, this person. But go ahead. The question is, um, Rosemary, please ask my family on the other side and my spirit guides, how can I financially become more abundant? I'm a giver and there's lots of takers out there. Thank you. Stop giving so much. It's You keep asking these questions and I've already answered them. You've got to be selfish with yourself. You've got to do things that work for you. You've got to to say no to those takers. Um, we all want to help our families, don't we? But sometimes you've just got to say no and mean it. And the problem with families especially is, and especially if you're a giver and they you know, take, 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 the problem with those people is because you said no before and then you backtrack or then you do it anyway they don't believe you when you say no so so if you if you say no but you don't mean it there's nothing anybody can do for you you could have advice from the spirit world they'll tell you the same thing if you're going to say no could you please mean it and say no it's not that you're turning people away it's not that you're turning your backs on them completely you're just saying no um um I'm too old for this or um, I don't have time for this or or simply, you know what, figure it out yourself right now. I've got to work for me. You want your life to become abundant and, in, and, and as your life becomes more abundant, your finances will follow suit. But you, you've, got, you've got to start and do things for you. Gosh, I feel as if I've been beating, beating, beating this stick endlessly for an hour. Keep going, Chris. <laughs> You've had a number of people talk about your upcoming Gray Eagle Speaks, about the upcoming Cracking Up, and they're wondering if you can tell them more. Uh, 
I'll know more um, probably uh, at the end of this, probably at the end of this month, <coughs> when we can organise things and what we can do with things uh, in that. And we certainly want to do more cracking up. Um, I would say that the Gregor Speaks, um, we might want to shoot for my birthday or not and that's may but i'm not 100 percent sure about that yet because i'm still uh having to plan things in my life being selfish uh i have to you know go through some more uh, tests and things i'm still trying to figure out what to do with my hand and i can't do anything with my hand until i get my breathing sorted out but we're getting it sorted out and it's no big deal and and um, as I told my grandson, we had some results back and, and my grandson got all panicky and I said, darling, I'm not dying. <laughs> just, we just have issues to deal with. So if, if you love me, you'll be patient with me. And uh, as soon as we know, keep checking the website. As soon as we know, there'll be something up there. If you are subscribed to my email, we'll, you'll get an email. If you're not subscribed to my email, well, you know what to do then, don't you? You go to my website and there's a little subscribe button and you click on the subscribe button and you'll be subscribed and then you'll get an email from me. So uh, just be patient. It's coming. I promise it's coming. Um, and, uh, you know, as soon as I can talk for more than an hour without coughing and spluttering, which is what I'm going to be doing in, uh, <coughs> in a few minutes, uh, we'll figure it out. Chris. Judith says, I had emergency life-saving surgery in December. Now I will have to have a minor surgery to implant a heart device. Do you see that as going as well as I hope? I'm affirming for myself. Yes, without a doubt, Judith. Don't worry. Uh, actually, you're in really good hands. You've got some good doctors there. Mm, yes. Keep going, Chris. This one's from Sandra. Good morning. I have moved my 84 year old father into my house to take care of. It has been a big change for my husband and I. Some days I just have to get away from him because I feel frustrated with him. I feel bad that I feel this way and I try my best and ask my angels, God and guides for assistance. Do you have any suggestions for me to overcome these feelings he is a difficult, selfish person who only really cares about himself, and I try to do my best. Sandra, now listen to me carefully. I think you're wonderful. It was an amazing thing that you did. If, you're, if your father is so grumpy and so on and so forth, I'm asking, and why did you take him to live with you? So, that's, so you must be very special to do that you should never feel guilty parents can be difficult uh, children can be difficult um you know it works both ways but here you are you you've changed your life you've changed your husband's life um you don't know how long your father's going to live he's eight what do you say he was 84 years old he could live to 90 or or 100 <laughs> don't, don't, don't. I don't want to I don't want to make it worse for you here. Here's what you need to do. Stop the guilt. That's for sure. Um, how do you do that? You understand. And again, it's the theme for the day. Be selfish with yourself. Be selfish with, uh, you know, and learn to say no. You cannot take care of, uh, of an older person, a parent. I mean, we've got all not not only is it taking care of him physically it's like you've got all that emotional stuff going on you have to take a break um you know even if it means leaving him on his own as long as you make sure it's safe you got to clear off you've got to either find another space in in the house which is a space for you and you alone uh where you can say no to everybody i feel so sorry for your husband so my advice is for him as well you know, sort of um, get some sort of nursing assistance once a week, for goodness sake, go out for dinner. You and your husband go out for dinner and don't come back. No matter what the emergency might be, don't come back home 
until you be selfish with yourself. Um, it's a huge, huge undertaking that you've that you've uh, you put upon yourself. Um, and although it's wonderful, and I think your reasons are wonderful, you know don't please don't feel guilty you probably hate him sometimes you probably wonder what on earth you did you probably hate yourself your husband might hate you sometimes for putting him in that position this is all natural it's all natural feelings you shouldn't feel guilty about it it's just a natural way of of how things work but please please be selfish with yourself at, at at, at least once a day in your case take take off take a hike go play something go watch a movie don't you know if he wants a cup of tea make him wait who cares you just got to be selfish with yourself otherwise you're not going to survive uh you'll find that you're the one who needs the help and he'll be hale hearty and, and strong be selfish with yourself my darling uh, i think it's wonderful that you did that um, I think you're crazy, uh, but in a good way. Um, but you, you've got, in order to survive, and you need to do more than survive. You need to love, you need to laugh, you need to be with your husband. This is your husband, you and your husband's time as well. So, you know, be selfish, the two of you. And for goodness sake, um, appreciate your husband. Tell him how much you love him. Don't, you know, because, boy... He's got to be something if he's allowed this to happen. Um, so, you know, be grateful for him and show him your appreciation. You, you might want to make him a cake or some nice cookies or something. I could think of other things you might want to do too. You've got to show your appreciation to him because he's your partner in this. And this is a huge, huge uh, burden that you have here. So make it the best you can. Chris. I think we've got time for one more. <coughs> okay, one more. This is from Marcella. I could sure use a message from my son, Brian, who passed away a year ago this week. Thank you, love, and miss you. Um, okay. Well, for those of you who have asked for messages, and I've said love, 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 I have to just mention that I do know Marcella and and her son and her family and so i can yeah i yes so here is the message marcella um i'm fine um no that's not right uh no he no he says no that's not right i'm more than fine it's amazing so i can tell you he's doing really well it's amazing. Apparently, Marcella, you're not doing so well. He visits with you often. Um, and um, something about feathers. The feathers needs the feathers need straightening. The feathers, apparently the feathers need straightening. I don't know what that means, but there you are. Okay, I think that's it for today, Chris. So I would like to say thank you all of you for joining me. Love, 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 selfishness, selfishness, get that message through, the love part especially. Um, um, what else? Uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining me and uh, putting up with me with my croaky voice and all the rest of it. I'd like to say thanks to Chris, a great facilitator as usual. Sorry we had all this, uh, this whatever's going on here. I think it's at your end, Chris. If everybody can hear me, I think it's... it's <laughs> to me it's got to be at your head <laughs> that's what i'm sticking to i would like to say thank you to uh, especially to Gregel, who is always here with us and please everybody until i see you all, all again probably next thursday until i see you all again please everybody have a very very blessed rest of the day have a very very blessed rest of the weekend it's still valentine's month so exude love, give love, and receive it wherever you can. Uh, until I see you again, 